Hello everyone, welcome to your second brand new tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to learn about lines, curves, polylines, and how to edit these lines. Uh, like do offset, trim, and extend, and probably a bit more. So first thing you want to do is open your Rhino program. So double click on perspective. So like we learned last time, if you just click on your right mouse uh, button and move it, you can see that we can orbit. Uh, the wheel itself, if you move forward and backward, it does zoom in and zoom out. And if you hit shift with your uh, right mouse click, you can see that we can do pen. So there's first thing you want to notice, we have here a bunch of commands. These commands are like the most used uh, commands in Rhino. Uh, so if you notice, we have like a small black triangle. If you just click on it and just keep on clicking, we can see that we can have more options for these commands. So let's say here in the line, the polyline, we have here more uh, options on how to create lines in Rhino. Same thing goes to curves, and same thing goes to circles and so forth. So I personally like to use these shortcuts. So I like to type in line, and you can see that it shows in our command line. I hit enter, it says start of line. Now we have like other uh, options here. You can choose to um, I click on them or not, but I'm just going to draw one simple line. If I want it uh, perpendicular to my axis, I can just hit shift and click. So let's say I want this to be 50, and I hit enter, and I click. You can see that I have a 50 millimeter line. So we notice that it's in millimeters. I'll change the unit settings to meters. So just put meters. And precision to 1.00. Hit no, everything's the same. We just have our um, measurements in meter. So the next thing I want to talk about is the polyline. So like we said, polyline can draw continuous uh, lines just by like clicking as much as you want, like how many lines you want. Now how did I draw it? So just click first, second, third, fourth, whatever how many lines you want and if you say I wanna I want it to end here if you hit escape it will actually disappear so what you want to do is actually either press spacebar enter or your right mouse click so you can see that we can still have the polyline we want and the shape we want so the next thing I want to explain is the curves and you can either choose the first one which is okay let's take out this you can choose this or this this one is a control point curve. What it means is that it doesn't draw exactly on the points I make. So you can see that the point I drew is here, but it actually drew a curve between this point here and the next point I drew here. So you can see that it's actually doing like a control kind of thing between those um, points. Uh, the second one is this curve, and you can see that when I draw the curve here, it's actually on the curve itself and not away from it. And it actually depends what kind of curve you want to do. If you feel like you have more control doing this curve, it's actually smoother than actually if you draw the points or the curve on the points. Exactly. So we have also this. I think this is a fun one to learn. It's the spiral one. And what you can do is just hit here, flat, because if you just draw it like here off the bat, we can see that it looks a bit like um, it's drawing it on the z axis, which is what I not what I wanted. So just click again and hit flat. You can see that we can draw it normally on the surface. So let's say I want the diameter to get here, and then I want to stop here. Now you can actually control how many turns you want by uh, using this. So it turns. Let's say I want it ten. Hit enter. You can see that we have ten turns. So hit enter. And I think by default it's 10 actually. Um, you can change it to any number you want, that'll be fine. Okay, and you can also draw circles very normally. Uh, you can either use the diameter itself, if you know the diameter. Um, you can say, like, I don't know, a 50 meter diameter. You can see that we're drawing our circle like that. You can also draw rectangles, easy. You can also make these rectangles rounded, so if you uh, choose this, you can see that you can actually round the edges of your rectangle. 
Okay, uh, polygons, same. You can actually say how many, uh, much number of sides you want. So let's say I want it to be uh, a pentagon, which is five. You can see that I'm, I'm drawing a pentagon. So hexagon would be six. So I just type in six here. You can see we have six sided polygon. Okay. Mm, okay. So let's try combining these two together. So let's say I want this to be one full shape. What you can do is actually trim it. So same thing when you're doing with AutoCAD. Select the whole thing, type trim, and select what you don't want. Now, the thing with um, the difference between AutoCAD and Rhino is in AutoCAD, TR is trim and like all these offset and like all these shortcuts you can write like one letter like L enter is gone but the thing is with Rhino if I just type in TR it's gonna actually maybe uh, choose the first one like triangulate mesh or the other ones so I'd really prefer if we just type in the whole um, word together like say polyline if I just write in polyline it can sometimes actually go to polygon and it's a bit confusing so i would recommend trying to type the whole word as one so let's say if like i want this to be one whole shape like when i drag this here i can see that it's disconnected from the rectangle so what i do this m enter or m spacebar i can move it and remember to make your o snap on so you can see that here at the end it's actually uh, checked so we can make it exactly um like snap to the Correct. Okay. So what you can do is actually a command called join. So just select the whole thing and type in join. You can see that says two curves join into one closed curve. So this is really useful if you have like a bunch of um, curves and but they have to be connected. You know, you can't just say I want this to join with this. It doesn't work. So it has to be connected and you can make them one full um, line or polyline together. The other thing you can do is offset. So offset. So let's say how much I want to offset, like from here to here, I want it to be, I don't know, three meters. So just type in the distance here, click it, and then type three, hit enter. And you can see that we have to select the curves. So select this curve and then just say which direction you want it to offset to. So let's say here should be fine. You can see that we offsetted the, the shape into three meters inside. Um, other thing you can do is called the extent. So let's say, um, okay. let's say I drew a polygon. Okay, okay let's say I want to uh, extrude or extend this line up to here. So what you can do is just select it, type in extend. And then it says which curves, hit enter. And then you can see that it's going to extend up to here. So what you can do is just trim this. And the thing when you're trimming a polygon, sometimes you have to type trim twice. So select it again, hit trim, and delete the second one. So if you notice that when you <clears throat> choose the other line and the whole polygon disappears, just go step back, which is Ctrl Z, and then uh, delete the other one with another trim command. So yeah, this should be it for the offset and the trim. The last thing I want to say is that extrusion. Um, I'm not sure if other programs like uh, AutoCAD does uh, extruding for curves, but I know that SketchUp and um, I'm not sure about 3D Max, but you can't extrude curves. Uh, or any any weird shapes like um, like Rhino does. So let's say I want this to be extruded into a surface. I just select it, hit extrude to curve, hit enter, and we can see that I say I can say how high I want it. So let's say I want it to be twenty. So if you notice that it's a bit of a wireframe design, just uh, click in your wheel and choose this one. And it makes it a shaded view, which you can see the surface better. So let's say I want to extrude this one. And if I click, I can see that it's one uh, solid shape. Now, 
by default if you're, it's the first time you're using this program solid gear would be no it could be like this so when you extrude it it's just gonna make it the surface and not the closed um shape you can either cap it in this case which closes it for you or when you extrude say when you extrude this make sure that your solid is a yes and not a no and you can say how high you want the shape okay now why is solid important so let's say i want to extrude the curve let's extrude this one and if my solid is a no okay so let's keep it as a no if i want to extrude this as a wall so let's say i want to extrude it it won't actually uh, extrude as a like one um, solid shape if I say I want to cap them both you notice that it caps each surface on its own so let's say if I want to delete this you notice that it deleted the outer shape completely and not what I wanted like in between so what I can do is before you extrude it so let's say extrude Make sure your solid is yes, and you can see now that we have a one full uh, shaped um, solid. Okay, and last thing I want to say is about um, actually editing your curve. So let's say I have this curve and I wanted to edit, like I wanted on the z and the x axis, and then suddenly I wanted to go to the I'm sorry, I wanted to uh, it's actually in the x and the y axis, and I wanted to be in the z axis. So you can see we have here two options. One is the edit points on, and this is points on and off. So this, if you click this, we can see that it redrew the um, points we have. Now, if you remembered, we actually when we drew this point, we actually used this one. It was a bit far. This one here, if you notice from the, the drawing itself, like the points are going to be on the curve itself. So just by moving these um, points, you can see that we can actually move these points and make it different now if you just click in the point and hit control you can actually move the point in the z axis so we notice that it's a bit going upwards and not flat on the um, z and y axis okay you can actually also extrude this very easy there's no problem i think in other programs it was a bit complicated uh, the curve it's not so easy to extrude what you want it's not as easy as it does it in rhino that's why i think rhino is actually the best program for the field so just extrude the curve here and you can see you can extrude anything you want even the line can be extruded everything can be extruded so as long as you have a line or a polyline or a curve you can extrude it no problem and um yeah that should be it for the lines and next tutorial i'm going to talk about surfaces and how to edit these surfaces in Rhino. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next tutorial.